Abnol's log. The war with Germany is approaching its conclusion. The Germans have very few ships left and will likely soon be forced into a peace deal. After months and months of fighting, it might also be curtains for Austria-Hungary, at least as we know it now. Both Austria and Hungary are being invaded separately and simultaneously, leaving the Austro-Hungarian army spread very thin as they try to defend their homeland as best they can. The whole land war is an extremely bloody affair. Many tens of thousands of men are dying every day. This makes the naval battles seem relatively clean. Sure, the navy isn't getting away without losing men, but at least it's not thousands per day. I'm doing my utmost best to keep losses to a minimum, as I know they might be just statistics to my government, but to me, those numbers represent men. They represent families torn apart and fathers that won't come home. This is why I order ships to be built as well protected as possible. I want my men to come home safely, or at least bring as many home as I can. Hey guys, still here and welcome to episode 34. We are going to kick this one off in the Baltics. There is a bit of a strike going on and it's a mixed bag. I am taking down an Ostfriesland class battleship. It is maneuvering around at 22.6 knots carrying 12 15.2 uh, inch guns. Now my battlecruiser is the Chitose of the Haruna class. Also present is the Doria of the Sanita class. Owner Estonia. Albany, owner Sweden, is a light cruiser of the Galveston class, I suspect brought in from the Americans. We have the Rossia, which is a Soviet warship, the Admiral Lazarev light cruiser. They're not very heavily armed, four uh, single six inch guns. We got destroyer Shelton, also from Sweden. Armed with a couple of 4.1 inch guns and 12 torpedo launchers. That's a substantial amount of firepower for a ship like that. Um, this is a destroyer owned by Denmark of the Hami class, which has uh, a couple of torpedo launchers, but really doesn't seem that dangerous. Vorona is a Russian ship. And finally, another Russian ship, the Medki. These seem to be the same class. So it's a very mixed bag. Uh, I don't think the Koenig's going to do much beyond harass some of the battle cruisers, if they can spot us at all. Here we go. The enemy battleship is showing up, but she's pretty close already. She's less than 10 clicks out from the Doria. Now the Doria is uh, an interesting design. I'll give her that. She has 11.2 inch guns, which for a battle cruiser is on the smaller end of the spectrum. But really good if you're taking down a boatload of cruisers. Interestingly, 11.2 um, inch also side mounts. Now they are Mark 3s. So they got some pretty decent stats. And they got some pretty good HE pen. It's not fantastic. It's not as good as some of my ships. But with soft capped shells, you kind of got this middle ground. That is uh, semi-decent at putting the ship ablaze. And also dealing some damage to superstructures. So it's a bit of both. Chitose, however, with her 92% accuracy on the 13-inch Mark IV, is a whole different beast. The Doria, sure enough, she's maneuvering, but the Chitose is too. This thing has an amazing amount of pen. Oh, sorry, an amazing amount of accuracy. Also because these sailors are veterans. Now we're going to fire armor-piercing into this ship. Apparently the game seems to think that's our best choice. I don't think so. But even with semi-armor piercing, you can still cause quite some devastation. And if you get a pen, you can cause some flooding. Now the DDs uh, accidentally got pulled into the division of the battle cruisers and with the light cruiser. It was all one big happy, well not so happy division because nobody could really move at their ideal speeds. Everybody was limited by the 25 knots or so from the Russian light cruisers. These are definitely a far cry from my 49 knot light cruisers. Interesting design uh, with a turret between the towers. I guess it works, but they're not very advanced. It's only a Mark II. As for the Russian armor scheme, Krupp 4 armor, not bad. Triple hull bottom, pretty good. Citadel 3. Capped Ballistic HE and AP shells. 
which means that these HE shells don't do as much damage, but they can definitely penetrate, well, probably superstructures if they're not that badly armored. As for maneuverability, this one's doing 29 knots. Her sister ship, Albany, I believe it was a Russian ship as well, uh, definitely way, way, way older. And considering it's now 1930, I'm somewhat surprised they're keeping this thing around. It's got one 7 inch on the bow, one on the stern, a couple of 3.4s on the port, and a couple of 3.4s on the starboard. But even the 3.4 inch guns are Mark II. They're old. Really, really, really old. I don't see the appeal of this particular ship. I do see the appeal to Chitose. And so does the AI, as it has started firing at the only ship in this whole formation that is actually mine. The Chitose, quite unlucky with the attention, is going to probably need a bit of time at Helgoland to get herself fixed up. Let's put a stop to that. Let's change the attention from the battleship away to the destroyer. I'm not even going to try and take a stab at pronouncing this, because it's... Yeah, I don't know. Um, nine and a half kilometer torps with a 44 knots. Did you just ding off of a DD? Oh, you must have. That's interesting. Um, anyway, we got Mark III dual launchers with 20-inch torps. Yeah, that'll keep him guessing for a while. Verona, same type. Not particularly fantastic ships. Uh, fairly fairly jack-of-all-trades in their performance, I think. The Shelton is a ship that I'm much more interested in. You can pretty quickly see that this is, I believe, an American uh, turret design. And this is the Mark IV 4-inch gun. Bloody hell. So the Americans got the Mark IVs. Okay. At this point in the war, I probably shouldn't be surprised. They got fast 20-inch torpedoes. A couple more hits going in, probably from the battle cruiser. Yeah, of the 6.7k damage done, 6.1k was done by Chitose. To nobody's surprise. Uh, torpedoes are momentarily arriving at Congo... Sorry, Koenig. And with standard bulkheads and cramped quarters, this is probably going to be a bit of bad news. We got one, two, three, three sections for the ship starting to flood. They've lost 24% of their crew. And I forgot to turn on the launcher. Oh, coming out with a bang. Um, Koenig just lost a turret. And because they lost a turret, they lost all ammunition on the 15.2 inch guns. So they're just completely relying at this point on 8.6s. Which is not stellar. Ah, we got a nice bouquet coming out of the med key. So what did so much damage? Oh, the torpedoes did so much damage. Yeah, you're dead, sir. Dud, dud, and basically no damage. Okay, let's see if the Swedish-American destroyer can do better. And it can. That's another six hits in Koenig. And she is sunk. So, the Germans lose another battleship. Uh, they probably didn't like that much because they don't have that many battleships to go around anyway. So, uh, well, that takes another 3,800 victory points for my team in the bag. The real question is, when is Germany going to figure out that perhaps it is not in their best interests to pursue this war? Because I think, basically like myself, they got dragged into this. And, well, here we are, but what are we going to do? Because they don't have that many ships, their whole uh, area is mined by my ships operating out of Helgoland. They can't do much. So this could, for the Germans, be a pretty quick war. In the meanwhile, I am working on an invasion of Croatia yet again. And this situation is not ideal for my battleships. Because the Croatian coast, apparently, out of the port of Pula, most likely, is heavily mined. So, Sagami, Yoshun, Haruna, and Ontake took a bit of damage from mines. And that means they're out of the fight. That means they're not going to be part of the invasion fleet anymore. And with that, I will not likely be able to get up to the 829,000 tons that I need. What I am doing is trying to push as many ships out there as I can. 
So basically anything that is not tied down for repairs is going over here in order to work that invasion. Now I have taken the area here, which gives me a, well, a fairly minor port, but I can still use this against the Austro-Hungarians in a later war. So yeah, it's going to be useful, but not yet. Um, over here, I'm sending more and more and more DDs over. Um, where is that other ship that I was sending in? Is she here yet? Not likely. No, she's not here. The Divine Broadside is on the move. I haven't refit her yet, and yes, I fully know well what happened to the previous ship that I sent on her way without being refit. So I am definitely going to refit her. There she is. Uh, I'm definitely going to refit her, but I'm going to do that at the port of Gibraltar. She is way too big to fit there, but the game doesn't seem to care much. So it doesn't really matter if you actually push a ship this big into a port that small and do the refit there. The game simply doesn't care. As for my money and fleet situation, when it comes to my ship designs, so far, I have been mostly relying for heavy cruisers on the Sanosawa class. These displace 13,552 tons. If they are built according to spec, they take 16 months to build. And uh, this base build is from 1920 with the refit coming out of 1928. I am considering getting a new heavy cruiser class. Because recently I've updated my destroyers in 1928. 1929 gave us the Gogeta class. And 1930 gave us the Yeyama. I don't want another super battleship, but a new heavy cruiser could be very useful. Now, when it comes to research, rangefinders are still coming up in five months, so that is definitely something I'm looking forward, uh, looking forward to. But let's have a look at what sort of hull I can get for the heavy cruiser. I'm very much um, going to follow probably the nine-inch gun. Because I like the dual barrel 9 inch gun a lot. It's a really good weapon system. And if I can put that on a pretty potent platform. Like the modern Cruiser 2. This is the modern heavy Cruiser 2. You can get quite a lot of firepower out of these ships. On top of that. Um, I'm wondering. With a hull form of 120. We are just shy of the, the Scout Cruiser hull form. So... Can I, in fact, apply the same trick? And I believe I can. In case you're wondering what trick I am on about, um, you can actually get these ships up to 48 knots. It has to do something with the beam and draft. Somebody explained it in the comments. I'll not go into that. Um, if I have, for example, a ship that is fairly wide, then this is going to be a ship that's costing me half a billion. And if you just reduce the beam, then at some point it actually becomes viable. To the tune of if my ship is so sleek that I have nine, uh, sorry, minus 9% beam, I'm looking at a ship that displaces only 4,000 tons. Um, this does not work if you have high or basically standard draft, because then you simply won't have enough tonnage left and the ship will still be crazy expensive. If you do it like this, though, you're paying 12 million. Uh, is it exploity? Mm, debatable. I'm not going to do it, though. I just wanted to see if it's possible. And the answer is yes, it is entirely possible. If I put this down to, like, what, 36 knots? Look at that. That changed four tons. So the game is telling me if you want an engine that's capable of doing 36 knots, your ship is going to weigh... 4,183 tons. If you wanted to do 46 knots, it's going to... Oh, it's only going to cost you 3 more tons. So this is something that is probably... Well, potentially going to get fixed. At this point, I don't want to say probably, because we're starting to approach April. And it is entirely likely that the game is going to cease to get further developed over in June. So... Yeah, it's entirely possible that we'll not actually see any further upgrades to it. Why is my ship overweight? What? What? Oh, because I'm still asking it to do this much. There we go, 35 knots. 
It is still crazy, though. I mean... Oh, well. Um, 35 knots for a heavy cruiser is fine. What I do want is, of course, more capacity or a better firing platform than these Sanosawas are. These things displace 13,540 tons, so let's say 13,5. This thing displaces 15,6. And if I can put more firepower onto that thing without costing incredibly much more, that'd be great. But it probably won't happen. Simply because tech is expensive. And cruisers such as these are generally packed to the gills with technology, especially if you let me design them. Let's put them on diesels and let's give them a rangefinder and acoustics. Defensive power against submarines. Yeah, like that worked. Uh, depth charges. Look at that. I'm already at 67 million. And we are not done yet. Reinforced bulkheads, anti flooding. Give me a double hull bottom. Give me a better propeller shaft. Aux. Balanced rudder. And an electro hydraulic steering. So now we're at 88 million, and this thing does, for now, take less time to build. That's good. The real question is, is this going to be a better ship than the Sanosawas? Because the Sanosawas are really decent ships. Both the Sanosawas and the Tsurugis have the same amount of firepower. It's 10 9-inch guns. If you really want to... You could probably put 12, and that's not even super firing. Um, like maybe 15 barrels on a platform like this. Your build time is only 15 months, so that's really good. The thing is, they get expensive at 95 million. And I don't know if I need to make something like this. You can do it, sure. Uh, you can also go the road of... Making it like a semi-battle cruiser with a couple of 11s. And these things pack a punch and a half. And especially with semi or piercing rounds and good loading systems, because I have Auto Loader 1, they still reload in only 32 seconds. Which, if you compare that to a 9-inch triple barrel, is not that much slower. This is 23 seconds. And let's say at 10,000 meters, it pens 6 inches. This one, at 10,000 meters, pens 9.8 inches. Does more damage, but it does reload a bit slower. These are Mark 5s, these are Mark 4s. If I can get Mark 5 10 inch, I'll take that. Yeah, okay, we're going 10 inch. So these are going to be cruisers that have probably ABXY. Um, and on top of that, 10 inch long barrel guns. Why? Because I will it so. That's why. See, at this point, I think I've mostly won the campaign. The only thing that could still make my life a bit more complex is the United States. Um, the US has an enormous fleet. Absolutely massive. And the question is, not if... I'm going to go to war with them, but rather when. I believe right now I'm allied with them. So right now we're both safe, I guess. But will... Holy shit, that's enormous. Will that persist? Um, I don't know. It might not. So far our interests have been largely aligned, however. Anyway, 10-inch um, barrels, I'll take these at uh, not 50% length, but 15 is fine. That, of course, is going to come at the reload cost. So my reload's now 38 seconds. But they are really accurate. And I'm going to be firing semi armor piercing shells. Check. 10,000 meter range. I can pen 10 inches. That will most likely leave a mark on most ships, if not all of them. And if I go for super heavy shells with better propellant and two powder, you can push this up to 11.1. Um, it's not necessarily the best choice for armor piercing shells, like the, the semi armor piercing, but potentially going light shells, so reducing deflection and semi ballistic. Yeah, now at 10,000 meter range, I have 12.3 inches. An armor piercing shell supposedly does 393 and 621 with HE. Uh, if I go here, we're looking at 432, 621. 
So, yeah. No, sorry, that's these stats. The shells here, or the types of damages don't change. Yeah, this should be fine. This should be fine. Supposedly, I can hit targets at the 30 kilometer range. I don't know if I really need that. I mean, you won't spot anything at 30 kilometer range. This is going to push my reload to 27 seconds on these guns. If I put them at zero length, 24. Can I sell this to myself as a decent design? Um, can these things do anything that the Tsurugis cannot? Not really. Are they faster? No. Uh, they can circumnavigate the Earth pretty much on one tank. So that's good. Uh, they're potentially more dangerous, although I've seen those 9-inch guns from the Sanosawa slash Tsurugis take down a battleship. So in that regard, maybe not even that much more dangerous. Because those 10 9-inch barrels fire very quickly, and they are generally capable of either burning through targets or just blowing them up with semi or piercing. So in this case, is this $100 million platform going to do more for me than the Sanosawas or the Tsurugis? And I think the answer is no. I think the answer is no. What if I go the opposite way? What if I do something entirely different? What if I try and make a cheap heavy cruiser? Something that does well to support the Gogetas. These are my damage dealers with their 8 15-inch guns. They also got 8.9-inch guns as secondaries. Um, I want something cheap, something that we can build pretty quick. Something with a decent hull form. So, a stable platform like this. Yeah. Something like a small... No, not that hull. I don't like that hull. Something like a small heavy cruiser. Cruiser Pagoda Tower? I didn't know you could do that. Base accuracy 14, base accuracy 16 and a half. See, this one it just takes up a lot more space. This one takes up less space, but is not telling you the whole story. Because this tower doesn't come with a funnel. And that means this tower is always going to have something extending beyond it. Like that, or if you go with something like this, the funnel is going to be encapsulated. What I'm also very interested in is what is my recon rating with the ship. It's going to be 91 or 87. So yeah, the Pagoda Tower just does see more, which is very useful. Um, I'm going to try and make them 35 knots again. We're going to go with standard quarters... I could go turbo electric drive, but it makes them really expensive. Not that money is that much of an object. Does this change the monthly maintenance fee? 3.9. 2.3. Wow. So diesel is so much cheaper to build, but also to maintain. Your turbines saves you about 100k a month. That's fine. 100k at this point is mostly a rounding error. Okay, uh, give me AUX 2, give me Shaft 2, give me a Balanced Rudder. Secondary. I don't quite like the way that looks. Go with this. Is the rear tower either 9 or 10? Look at that. Where are you supposed to put your guns? No. This one. Because this one, at least, can house the super funnel. I think three? No? Damn. 78% engine efficiency is not great. I don't quite like that. Hmm. Deturp two. Deflood all. Rangefinder, coincidence, RDF, sonar, depth charge. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yep, yeah, check. Okay. So now, guns. I'm thinking we're going just 9-inch guns again. It's a bit unimaginative, but... It works. It's just a ship that works. It's a gun that works. And I like it. 
And with this, they still have more firepower than the Tsurugis. And they only take 13 months to build. Let's put some of our bed armor on them. Let's make sure they steer a bit better than that. And when it comes to the guns, I'm perfectly happy with that. I will, however, take TNT and 2 powder and semi and heavy. So now I can pen 8 inches of armor. It's a bit less than I'd like. If I spam high explosive with these things, it'll not do that well. Although... Well, the reload is in 29 seconds on these things. That's substantial. Hmm. 22 seconds. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Okay, I also want some secondary guns, and then I'm going to have to balance the ship out. That doesn't fit. That kind of fits. Uh, and the rest, I guess, is going to be two inch barrels. If and when convenient, remove that. There. Okay. Uh, it's still going to take 14 months to build. But I think if I make him a bit sleeker, maybe we can turn that down. No, 13 months. But they're cheaper. They're 59 million, as opposed to the refit for the Sun of Solid, which is 64 million. These things do 35 knots. Uh, I also do 35 knots. I can probably push that up to 30... Yeah, like, you can do the 46 knots. No, you can't. Interesting. What if I reduce the draft? And now you can. Bloody hell. Yeah, that definitely feels exploity. I'm not doing that. Uh, give me 37 knots. They're fast, these ships. Really fast. Push some guns a bit farther forward. Because my balance is way out of whack. Ooh. Here's a thought. I could give them another gun. He said. It'll be fun, he said. What is that antenna? Is that yours? What is that? And why is it getting in my... Whoa. Way. Come on. I just want a nice, cute, decent barbette. Something I can work with. And I can still put a 5-inch gun over. That is not helpful. This is a standard barbette for secondary. I don't think I can get the tall ones. Short, standard. Jeez, that's enormous. But it will fit the 5-inch gun and I can fire over it. Excellent. Sold. Can I do that on the stern? Uh, probably not. Gotta say, this does feel like a sort of congested ship. There's a lot on it. Let's see, can I push this on the stern as well? Yeah, you guys can leave. If I can get a 5 inch, I'll get a 5 inch. This here, this here, this here. Yes! That actually works. I like it. I don't like this though. Like, just sit your ass down. What? Oh, the whole funnel forgot where to sit. Come on. Sit over there. Funnel 3, was it? No, funnel 2. And then secondary guns... If you even consider that I need these. You know what? We're going to make those really small. Why? For laughs. 1.1 in secondaries. With a range of only 4 kilometers. But you can kind of boost that. By 10%. Now they have a range of 5.3. They fire every 4 seconds. Do they do any damage? Not really. But they're cute. And they should be fun to look at. Okay, remove that. I don't have a lot of displacement left for armor, though. 
somewhat concerning. And my engine efficiency could have been better. But hey, it's an interesting cruiser design. When it comes to these shells... Yeah, you know what? With semi-ballistic shells, I'll generally blow a hole in most of the targets that I'm going to be facing. So it should be fine. Hmm. Slide four weight offset. Okay. Um, give me two inches of superstructure armor. Give me like uh, 14 inches of turret armor. I'll take 12 inches of superstructure armor. Uh, sorry, conning tower armor. I'll take eight, six, six, four, four, four. And we're basically at capacity. I have 30 tons left. Inner deck, I don't really care about. Inner belt, more so. 35? No. Well, yeah, we can do that. Okay, there, sold. Class, ASO class. 20,000 kilometers, 37 knots, pretty quick. Build time, slightly less. Does make the ship slightly more expensive. I have 12 barrels, which is still more than the Tsurugis and the Sanosawas. And yeah, I like it. Let's go with that. So this ship is going to be the new heavy cruiser class and eventually will enter service. But it'll take a while before we actually get to see that ship entering service. Because I don't know if I can actually free up the capacity to get these things going. I still have a load of battleships that I need to fix. And in order to refit the Divine Broadside, which will take a month, I think just one month, I need another 150,000 tons. <sighs> I need more shipyards. How's my... Uh, right now it's not that bad. I, I get little over... Sorry, a little under 100 spare... The fleet should be just getting some repairs. Oh, Shimane isn't getting built. Fixed? What's your story? Oh, you're getting repaired for the next 15 months. Jesus. It's an expensive hobby. Hmm. I'm considering just scrapping this thing altogether. Because the Shimane... She never seen any action... And her sister ship died. Pretty horribly. I really don't like this sloping thing because it's making it very, very, very difficult to work with. Yeah, you're getting scrapped. I'm not spending another 15 months, 15 million a month in order to take this thing back into service. And then have it hit a mine or something stupid like that. Or get hit by a submarine. I would r much rather have that shipyard capacity and that money and start building out either more of the, let's say, ship of the line battle cruisers, or start fixing ships that need it, that really need it, and that I can actually use on the main line. The Shimane. The thinking behind it, I think, was okay, because my thought was I'm going to push this hole out and I'll refit it later. But, you know, the whole problem with the super ships, they take so many resources and they can only be in one spot. That's the problem. Ah, Yamashiro's coming out though. Very good. She's in the port of Olbia. Excellent. And Katsurugi is. So the Katsuragi is coming out in Gibraltar. Yeah, excellent. Building 6 months, 6, 8, 12. Karosawa suspended. Resume. I was building ships as a contractor and I think they're all complete. What about the ships that I'm fixing up? One month. I thought people got hit by mines. Did the game forget about that? That's weird. But again, the game is weird. Do we have a quick convoy here? Oh, 
That's Chitose, yet again. And the battlecruiser Camellia from Sweden. Jeez, the Swedes are really properly armed. Eight 14-inch guns against the battleship Wetten. Lost Friesland. Another one of those eight... Uh, sorry, six double-barrel 15-inchers. And they're defending six transports. So let's just crash right through the escort and then blow up the rest of the ship. Here we go. I think Chitose, this class of battlecruiser, is pretty much an optimal example of this thing is enough. Especially with the veteran crew, it has outstanding accuracy. These 13-inch guns, if they are so inclined, um, mostly get the job done. B turret. B turrets are taking an early vacation. I'm not sure what the hell that's about. Uh, the 13-inch guns can deal a lot of damage, both in HE and AP. Extremely accurate. Um, both against battleships and cruisers, do they work? So yeah, they're just really good ships. What is with my B turret? You see, it's not even turning. That was the A turret, right? Wow, even my secondaries are now starting to pay attention. Secondaries with 10.5 kilometer range. I have no idea why my B turret not working. Makes absolutely no sense. The ship is pristine. There's not a scratch on her. And this turret just goes, nah, I don't feel like it. I have days when I don't feel like it, and I still show up. You're a damn turret on a ship. Get to work. Okay. Does the Camellia at least work as intended? Her 14-inch guns, 14.1s, reload in 55 seconds. They're Mark III, though. Props to whoever built her. I think she looks... Vaguely British. These barrels? L yeah, most likely British design. Now, last time around, this thing flooded in very, very quick order. Let's see if we can make that happen again. Yeah, more flooding happening. You still haven't hit me. Ooh, more flooding, thanks to the Camellia. My god, the AI is so bad. This thing is largely burning. Look at that fire! Where is that fire? Is that on the rope? This one. What is that about? It's like the game considers that this part apparently has a hitbox of some sort. And it can burn. Okay. Could you stop blowing substantial holes in Chitose? Is this thing got a 15.2 inch shell to pen the secondary tower with substantial damage as a result? No armor piercing, please. Kill it. Doesn't necessarily have to be with fire, just take it out of commission. Price? 137 million. How much have they paid for the Camellia? 54 million? What sort of budget boat are you? My cruisers are ex more expensive than this. Gear turbines, one. Aux, one. Shaft, one. Group four, Barbette four, Antitorp three, triple hull bottom. Citadel, three. Okay. Dunite bursting charge? <laughs> okay. Electrical turrets and enhanced reloading. Coincidence, three. Hydro, one. My god. See, the problem with these ships is that they don't have the blueprint. So, they can get them, but they can't refit them. So, Sweden is kind of stuck using this really old battlecruiser that, to be fair, is still kicking the ass of this German battleship. 
But I was just expecting this thing to be a little more advanced. You okay? Actually, mildly flooded. It's really not that bad. Very good. In the meanwhile, the Wettin is not that happy. She's lost her sea turret. She's listing over badly. And that last bit of flooding could sink her. 8%, 7, 6, 5. Come on. 3, 2, 1 and done. Nope. Is this how it's going to be then? Is it really? Hmm. Go ahead, cheat. Boink, ricochet. That thing was on 2% buoyancy and now it's just surviving? How fast is it? 12 knots. Okay, Camellia, you're going after it. She still has a 7.3 and a bunch of 5s. I mean, all these guns could be useful when I'm engaging a convoy, but... She can take the credit. Sweden can lord it over the, uh, the Germans that they actually managed to sink a German battleship using a $54 million battlecruiser. We'll just hide the fact that the Chitosa did most of the damage. That doesn't have to make it into the records, right? We can give this one to the Swedes. Sweden the deal for them, if you know what I mean. The tower's dead. They, can they even see me? Yes, they can. They still see Camellia. That's interesting. Can you just put this thing out of its misery? No? Cool. 42% of the crew's been lost. So with a couple more decent HE hits, maybe on the secondary tower, they're gone. 43. What I don't quite understand, where's this convoy at? Oh, they're over there. Okay, my bad. You're still shooting? You got a... Got a range of almost 28 kilometers. You're still getting 5% accuracy. That's really good. What's your chance to pen? Zero. Bloody hell. Seven inch inner armor belt. Okay. Yeah, no wonder I'm not penning that thing. But the crew's dead. Your crew is no longer sufficient to man the ship. Their control's 58%. Yeah, there you go. Surrender to high casualties. Now I want that convoy. Chitose worked hard for it. Now we're going to get the convoy. And apparently they're not that far away anymore. Camellia, however, is. She's still 30 clicks out. She's rushing in at best speed, and her best speed is 29.4. Which, considering her price point, is pretty good. She just... Yeah, she has spacious quarters. That's a lot of crew on that thing. 1,300. Mine are crewed by a little under 1,100. And mine are bigger ships. 26,000 tons. 30,000 tons. Oh, you know. Japanese efficiency. Here we are. One convoy sighted. We only spotted these guys at 8 kilometer out. And interestingly, they spotted me before I spotted them. Now, I decided to let the 4-inch guns have a little bit of fun. These guys don't get a lot of action. So far, they have done... Yeah, no, okay, that's a bit skewed. Um, they have done 14,000 damage, but that's because they just hit this guy for like 9,000 damage in one shot. So, the 4-inch guns are going to get a bit of action today. Are you shooting back? This thing has more firepower than most destroyers that the AI builds. It's also substantially larger, of course. Where's the Camellia? 
There's still 20 clicks out. Boom. Anyway, before this 4-inch gun started murdering everything, it probably didn't do that much damage. So, yeah, just take this 30,000 damage number with a grain of salt. Okay, I'm going to allow the main guns to pitch in. B turret's still on vacation. Boom. Yeah, that's 17k. That's more like it. I do wonder what the Germans were defending. That was so expensive. Let me know down below in the comments what was so expensive that the Germans thought they needed a battleship to escort it. Main gun? Main gun. 24k. Kaiser Karl der Große. That's a very intimidating name for a transport armed with 4 inch guns. There you go. Job done. Target has been eliminated. Now this means I can go home. I can get this ship repaired because it does seem to need a new secondary tower. Nevertheless, that is a nice amount of victory points. So what happens next? Um, probably we're going to start seeing some of the new ships come into play. I hope that's going to be in sometime in the next episode. And I'm concerned for my naval landing in Croatia. Because I'm very much aware of the risk of mines and submarines that the Croatians... Uh, sorry, that the Austro-Hungarians pose. So as much as I would like to take that territory, I don't think that I can sustain having 800,000 tons of ships out there. It is just a lot of tonnage in order to take that country or that territory. Um, yeah, let's, let's see if the Germans want to play ball. Let's see if the Germans want to play ball. Next turn, maybe? And interestingly, it's the British, apparently, that have signed peace with the Germans. Even though I said, yeah, let's go to peace. Um, I've also signed peace with them. And I cannot take any of their territories. I can get their ships. But... Um, I'd rather have cash, probably. Did I really have that little? Huh. Okay, fine. I'll propose this and I'll get that. And there is my funding. New technology. Large battleship hulls. I don't know how much bigger my battleship hulls are supposed to get. Considering that I have the biggest ships in existence. Okay, one final look at this. I want to see how well this is doing. This is... Well, we're getting pretty close. 829,000 tons. And those invasions of Hungary, oh, that's going quite well. This is also going quite well. Yeah, so Austria-Hungary might cease to exist in the next episode. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon for more.